Is NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, still relevant in today's world, or has it outlived its purpose? This question stirs up robust debate among scholars, policy analysts, and international relations enthusiasts alike, a question that casts a lens on the evolving landscape of global politics, and the role this post-World War II alliance plays in it. NATO, an intergovernmental military alliance between 30 North American and European countries, was born out of a need for collective defense. The member nations vowed to stand together against aggression, a commitment enshrined in the famous Article 5 of the NATO Treaty. An attack on one is an attack on all. A principle that has guided NATO's actions and strategies since its inception. Fast forward to the present, the world is a dramatically different place. The Cold War has ended, the Soviet Union no longer exists and the geopolitical dynamics have shifted dramatically. Yet, NATO continues to exist, even expand, prompting some to question its relevance in a world that is no longer bipolar. Critics argue that NATO, initially formed as a deterrent against Soviet aggression, is now a tool of Western imperialism. They point to NATO's interventions in non-member countries such as Libya and Yugoslavia as examples of its overreach. On the other hand, proponents of NATO argue that in a world increasingly marked by complex security challenges, NATO's role is more important than ever. They point to its peacekeeping missions, its role in combating terrorism, and its efforts to manage the refugee crisis as evidence of its continued relevance. NATO's existence, therefore, is a complex enigma, wrapped in layers of history, politics, and international relations. It's a story of an organization that has evolved and adapted to the changing global landscape, all while retaining its core principle of collective defense. Regardless of where one stands in the debate, it's clear that NATO's role in the world today is as controversial as it is impactful. Its existence is not just a matter of historical interest, but a topic of contemporary relevance that affects the dynamics of global politics. To understand NATO's place in the world, we need to delve into its creation and expansion. Let's rewind to the year 1949, in the aftermath of World War II. The world was left decimated, with nations struggling to rebuild amidst the ruins. However, as countries began to recover, a new threat was looming on the horizon, the Soviet Union. The fear of Soviet expansion was very real and palpable, especially among the Western countries. The Iron Curtain had descended across Europe, marking the beginning of the Cold War. In this climate of fear and uncertainty, it became clear that individual nations could no longer guarantee their own security. The need for collective defense was paramount. It was in this context that the idea of a transatlantic alliance began to take shape. The goal was simple yet ambitious, to safeguard the freedom and security of its members through political and military means. The United States, Canada and ten Western European nations convened to discuss this idea. They recognized the need for a united front against the potential threat of the Soviet Union. The result was the signing of the North Atlantic Treaty in Washington, D.C. on April 4, 1949. The treaty was a powerful statement of solidarity against aggression, it was based on the principle of collective defense meaning an attack against one ally would be considered an attack against all. This represented a significant shift in U.S. foreign policy, marking the first time the United States had entered into a peacetime military alliance. The North Atlantic Treaty Organization, or NATO as it came to be known, was not just a military alliance. It was also a political one, promoting democratic values and encouraging cooperation on political and economic issues. NATO was more than just a pact between countries, it was a commitment to uphold peace and security. Thus, NATO was born, a beacon of hope in a world recovering from the horrors of war. The formation of this alliance signaled a new era of international cooperation, setting the stage for the geopolitical landscape as we know it today. As the 1950s dawned, NATO began to take shape, moving beyond the realm of a mere political alliance. The initial years were crucial in defining the military structure of the organization, NATO's first strategic concept was adopted, outlining the principles of collective defense. A standing force was established known as the Allied Command Europe Mobile Force, a rapid reaction corps that could be quickly dispatched to defend any member state under attack. Simultaneously, NATO was growing in size. Greece and Turkey became members in 1952, strengthening the alliance's strategic position in the Mediterranean. Three years later, the Federal Republic of Germany was invited to join, marking a significant step in its post-war rehabilitation. 
The inclusion of these nations was a clear indication of NATO's growing influence and its commitment to the collective security of its member states. The early years also saw the establishment of NATO's headquarters. Initially based in London the headquarters moved to Paris in 1952. This was a temporary arrangement as the permanent headquarters were still under construction in Brussels, Belgium. The move from London to Paris was symbolic, marking the transition from the planning phase to the operational phase of NATO. These developments were instrumental in shaping NATO's identity. The organization was no longer a mere treaty on paper, it had become a dynamic, operational and influential alliance. However, it was not without challenges. The growing tensions of the Cold War and the escalating arms race with the Soviet Union presented significant obstacles. But NATO, with its collective defense mechanism and a unified military command, was prepared to face these challenges head-on. In its early years, NATO was steadily growing, but the best was yet to come. The following decades would see the organization expand and transform, adapting to the changing global landscape and continuing to play a crucial role in maintaining international peace and security. The Cold War era marked a significant period of expansion and transformation for NATO, a time where the alliance not only grew in numbers, but also in its strategic focus and mission. In the early years of the Cold War, NATO was primarily a defensive pact, aimed at curbing the spread of communism. However, as the Cold War progressed and the geopolitical landscape began to shift, NATO too underwent a transformation. The alliance started to focus more on deterrence, a strategic shift that was both proactive and defensive. This shift was exemplified in the inclusion of West Germany into the alliance in the mid-50s. Germany's entry was a significant move, not only because it marked the first expansion of NATO since its inception, but also because it symbolized the changing dynamics of the post-World War II era. Germany's inclusion was not without controversy though. Many were skeptical considering the country's recent past, but NATO saw the strategic value in integrating Germany. It was a move that bolstered NATO's strength, while also facilitating Germany's transition into a peaceful democratic nation. As the Cold War progressed, NATO continued to expand, welcoming Greece and Turkey in the 50s, Spain in the 80s, and a wave of former Warsaw Pact countries in the 90s. Each new member strengthened the alliance, adding to its collective defense capabilities and reinforcing its deterrence strategy. But expansion was not the only change. NATO also evolved its strategic doctrine to reflect the changing nature of global threats. The alliance began to focus more on issues such as nuclear deterrence, crisis management and cooperative security, broadening its mandate beyond mere collective defense. By the end of the Cold War, NATO had transformed into a formidable force, but the world was about to change. The dissolution of the Soviet Union, the emergence of new global threats, and the shifting geopolitical landscape would all pose new challenges and opportunities for NATO. But that, my friends, is a story for another time. With the fall of the Soviet Union, NATO found itself in a world vastly different from what it was created for. The end of the Cold War marked a profound shift in the global political landscape, and NATO, as a product of that earlier era, needed to redefine its purpose. In this brave new world, NATO's role expanded beyond its original mandate of collective defense. The organization began to take on a broader range of missions, including crisis management and peacekeeping operations. A prime example of this was NATO's involvement in the Balkans during the 90s. The region was engulfed in a series of brutal conflicts following the disintegration of Yugoslavia. NATO intervened to stop the bloodshed, launching airstrikes and deploying peacekeeping troops on the ground. But perhaps the most significant development in the post-Cold War era was the inclusion of former Warsaw Pact countries into NATO's fold. In the late 90s and early 2000s several Eastern European countries that were once part of the Soviet sphere of influence joined NATO. This eastward expansion was seen as a triumph for liberal democracy and a testament to NATO's enduring appeal. The events of September 11, 2001 marked another turning point for NATO. In the wake of the terrorist attacks on the United States, NATO invoked Article 5 of its charter for the first time in its history. This article, often referred to as the Collective Defense Clause, states that an attack on one member is an attack on all. NATO's response to 9-11 demonstrated its commitment to collective security and its ability to adapt to new threats. Despite the changing global landscape, NATO has continued to adapt and expand. From its inception as a defensive alliance against the Soviet Union, NATO has evolved into a multifaceted organization that plays a crucial role in maintaining international peace and security. 
Its story is a testament to the power of cooperation and the enduring value of shared values. Today, NATO stands as the world's most powerful military alliance, its influence reaching far beyond the boundaries of the North Atlantic. The North Atlantic Treaty Organization, better known as NATO, has grown significantly from its initial 12 member states to a robust alliance of 30. Its mandate, once confined to the defense of the North Atlantic region, now extends to maintaining peace and security on a global scale. In the contemporary world, NATO's operations are diverse and far-reaching. It's currently involved in numerous ongoing missions across different continents. From Afghanistan to Kosovo, the Mediterranean to the Horn of Africa, NATO is actively engaged in peacekeeping, conflict resolution, and countering terrorism. In addition to these operations, NATO also conducts extensive training and capacity-building programs, assisting nations in strengthening their own security forces and infrastructure. The challenges NATO faces today are quite unlike those it confronted at its founding. The nature of conflict has dramatically changed over the years, and so have the threats to international peace and security. Cyber warfare, hybrid threats, terrorism, and the rise of non-state actors are some of the significant challenges that NATO grapples with in this era. Moreover, the rapid advancement in technology and the increasing role of information warfare have added new dimensions to NATO's operational landscape. The Alliance has been quick to adapt, integrating these emerging domains into its strategic outlook. It recognizes that the collective defense of its members now involves not just land, sea and air but also cyberspace. Despite these evolving challenges, NATO's core principle remains unchanged. The commitment to collective defense, encapsulated in Article 5, still forms the backbone of the alliance. An attack on one is considered an attack on all, a sentiment that continues to bind the alliance together. NATO, from its inception to today, has played a pivotal role in shaping global politics. With its constant evolution to meet the demands of a changing world, it remains a key player in international security and a cornerstone of the global order. So, returning to our initial question, is NATO still relevant in today's world? To answer this question, let's consider a few key factors. First, the global security threats. In an era rampant with cyber warfare, terrorism, and nuclear proliferation, NATO's role as a security alliance is arguably more important than ever. The organization provides a platform for countries to work together, pooling resources and intelligence for a collective defense. Now let's look at the political tensions. The 21st century has seen a resurgence of aggressive policies from nations like Russia and China, both of which have been involved in territorial disputes. In these circumstances, NATO offers a shield of deterrence and a potential counterweight to these powers, reinforcing the importance of collective security. However, the changing dynamics of international relations cannot be ignored. With the rise of new powers and the shift of influence towards the East, some argue that NATO, with its Euro-Atlantic focus, is becoming less relevant. Critics suggest that the alliance is a relic of the Cold War, ill-suited for addressing the challenges of the modern world. Moreover, internal disagreements within NATO, particularly over defense spending and the commitment to mutual defense, have led to questions about the alliance's unity and effectiveness. These issues underscore the need for NATO to adapt and evolve to maintain its relevance. On the flip side, proponents argue that NATO's enduring value lies in its ability to adapt. Over the years, NATO has shown a capacity to transform, taking on new missions and expanding its membership. They assert that with continued adaptation, NATO can remain a vital player in global security. In summary, the debate over NATO's relevance today is a complex one. It involves weighing the alliance's historical role against the evolving international landscape and the challenges that lie ahead. The question of NATO's relevance is complex, and the answer depends largely on one's perspective. So, as we continue to navigate the intricacies of the 21st century, the significance of NATO will undoubtedly remain a topic of fervent discussion. We've taken a deep dive into the history of NATO, from its birth to its current state. We've traced its roots from the ashes of World War II, born out of necessity and a shared desire for peace. We journeyed through its early years, watching as it grew from a fledgling alliance into a formidable force. We witnessed its transformation and expansion, adapting to the changing landscape of global politics. We saw it navigate the choppy waters of the post-Cold War era, grappling with its identity and purpose in a world that had dramatically shifted. And we've looked at NATO today, an alliance that continues to evolve and respond to the myriad challenges of our time. We've also considered its relevance, 
its role in safeguarding peace and stability in an increasingly unpredictable world. As we continue to navigate the complexities of global politics, NATO remains a significant player, its future as uncertain and intriguing as its past.